Hey everyone! I've made a number of videos recently about various philosophical and mathematical paradoxes. There's Newcomb's paradox, uh, the Sleeping Beauty problem, the repugnant conclusion, and reading through the comments, uh, both on this channel and elsewhere, about these problems, it began to seem like I should really make a video about how to resolve philosophical paradoxes, or how to approach them, um, and what are some of the recurring mistakes that I think people make when they try to tackle these kinds of issues. So first off, what defines a paradox is that you have two or more different arguments, each of which seems very logical or plausible to at least some people, but they contradict each other. So they can't both or can't all be correct. So in Sleeping Beauty, there's the havers and the thirders. In Newcomb's problem, there's the one boxers and the two boxers. In the repugnant conclusion, there's uh, it's slightly different, but there's a, a logical sounding argument or two arguments that contradict a logical sounding conclusion. And there's a few different ways to approach these paradoxes. You can try to explain why one of the logical sounding arguments actually isn't logical, or you can explain why they're both wrong or all wrong, or you can attack the formulation of the question and argue, well, it was an ill-formed or ill-posed problem to begin with, so there's no way to answer it sensibly. These can all be legitimate uh, resolutions to, to paradoxes, but what's not a legitimate resolution is to simply argue why one of the arguments makes sense. So for example, some people uh, answered the Sleeping Beauty problem by saying, well, it's got to be one half because here's why one half makes sense. And of course you can make a logical sounding argument for one half. Uh, the whole reason it's a paradox is that there's also a logical sounding argument you can make for one third. Um, and you may not think it's logical, but in order to resolve the paradox, you have to explain why that other argument isn't logical. It's not enough to just make a case for one. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing that I see people sometimes doing in these discussions is finding some kind of cleverish loophole to get themselves out of the paradox entirely. So in Newcomb's problem, for example, some people pointed out, well, the mad scientist claims that she has a perfect track record in predicting whether people will one box or two box, but we don't know that. Uh, she could be lying. She's probably lying. Paradox resolved. And it, it is technically true that you don't know she's telling the truth, but if she's not, then that's just a boring question, right? So by assuming that solution, um, you've just transformed a potentially interesting problem into a boring one, which just doesn't seem like a very uh, valuable use of your time. I don't know. I don't really understand what's going through people's heads when they approach paradoxes or, or philosophical thought experiments this way. Like, it's not like there's some kind of prize that you get if you find a way out of this particular formulation of the problem. Uh, a more interesting way to deal with a problem like that would be to say, well, so I can see how there's a way out in this particular formulation, but let's imagine instead that I saw a hundred people go into her tent and each one comes out with either two boxes and just a thousand dollars or one box and a million dollars. So you have the evidence in, you know, in front of your own eyes that her track record is perfect. What then? In other words, if you see a hole, don't just run through the hole and say, yeah, I win. Patch the hole and then tackle the this, you know, harder, more interesting version of the problem. The real world principle that I think this uh, generalizes to is something called the least convenient possible world. So whatever argument you're making or justification you're using, like, uh, I don't think it's worth giving to charity because you never know if charities are mishandling your money. You could stop there and call it a day. You don't have to, to donate to charities. Great. Or you could ask yourself, well, what if I knew that there was a charity that wasn't mishandling my money or I had like strong confidence. It had been rigorously vetted by people I trusted. Then would I feel like I had to donate? And if not, well, then that reveals that your original reason was either not the real reason or not the full story for why you don't want to donate, um, which is interesting. So I think this is a good habit to get into, not just in uh, uh, pushing on other people's arguments, but pushing on your own as well. It's a, a good epistemic practice. So those are the two principles I want to leave you with, not just for tackling paradoxes and thought experiments, but uh, for arguments in general. First, it's not enough to find a plausible argument for one side. You have to also check and see if there are equally plausible arguments for other sides. And second, imagine your argument in the least convenient possible world.